Now we're going to talk about nuclear fusion. And again, we're still talking about, of course, modern or nuclear physics. Now, nuclear fusion is a very interesting reaction. So what we've learned so far is that when we have large, unstable nuclei, uh, they sometimes will eject particles to try to become more stable. And in the process, the daughter products, if you add up the mass of the daughter products, you'll end up with less mass than what you started with. So whenever large nuclei break down into smaller nuclei, they release energy by converting mass to energy. So the assumption then is if you take small nuclei and put them together to make bigger nuclei, that actually would take energy because the mass would then increase. But that's not the case. For small nuclei, it's different. When you put small nuclei together, for example, when you put hydrogens together and essentially make helium from that, of course that takes initially a lot of heat to make that happen, the result is that net energy release is, is accomplished. And so that means that the mass of the helium nucleus is less than the mass of the individual hydrogen atoms or nuclei that were put together to make helium. So in this process also, you lose mass. And of course, if you lose mass, you convert that mass to energy. So which means that energy is created by taking small nuclei and making them bigger, and energy is created when you take larger nuclei and make them smaller. So somewhere in between there must be one element where you cannot make it either bigger or smaller and release energy in the process. And that element happens to be iron, Fe. So any element smaller than iron can be fused together and release energy because the resulting mass bill will be smaller all the way up to iron. And anything bigger than iron can be made smaller and therefore mass is released and therefore you then also release energy but you can't cross iron. Iron is that very special element. And it turns out that because of this, this particular property of iron that you can neither fuse it nor fission it, of course fusing it meaning putting smaller atoms together making something bigger and fissioning it making big, big ions, uh, big um, uh, nuclei and breaking them together and make smaller nuclei. Since you cannot do that with iron, it's this particular iron, it's this particular process in giant stars when they explode that cause us to be here in existence actually is the property of iron that makes life possible. Of course, that's a whole other story. So what I'm talking about is that this particular fusion process occurs in stars. And stars, as they get to the end stage of their life and become red giants, they create more and more fusion reactions until they create iron. And since you cannot release any more energy by fusing iron into bigger atoms, that fusion process stops, the star implodes, it explodes in a, giant, in a giant violent explosion called a supernova explosion which causes all the elements in the periodic table to be produced and then scattered throughout the universe and it's those atoms, those elements that then are used to make planets like the earth and used to make up the atoms of our bodies. So if that didn't happen, we wouldn't exist. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Going back to nuclear fusion, what we're trying to do here is try to figure out how much energy is produced in this particular reaction. Now, of course, hydrogen doesn't get slammed together and turned into helium all at once. It goes through a step of processes called the proton-proton chain. And this is exactly how the sun produces energy in its center. The reason why the sun does it in its center is because you need these enormous temperatures of at least 10 million degrees to make this process happen. Hydrogens, since they're positively charged, normally don't like to be close together, and so it takes an enormous amount of speeds for them to come close enough for the nuclear strong force to take over and grab them and hold them together. Temperatures required to attain these speeds are at least 10 million degrees. So we're going to look at it very simplistically. We're going to say, let's take four hydrogens through a set of processes, eventually turn into uh, a helium nucleus, and how much energy is released, and of course, what we need to do is find the missing mass, or the mass defect, and so we're going to take the mass of a helium nucleus and subtract the mass of four protons. Now, usually in this process, hydrogen is not in its neutral form, meaning the electrons are stripped away. <clears throat> so we're simply going to take the mass of the protons and not the mass of the hydrogen atoms. So we're going to use this mass, multiply times four, and then subtract this mass from it, and the mass defect then will then be converted into energy. So let's try that. So four times the mass of a proton is equal to four times 1.007276 atomic mass units. So we have a 1.007276 times 4 equals, and so that would be equal to 4.029.
104 atomic mass units. And from that, we're going to subtract a helium nucleus, which is 4.002603 atomic mass units. So if subtract that, 3 from 4 is 1, that's 0, that's 11, that's 5, that's 8 minus 2 is 6, that's 2, 0, and 0. So the difference is 0 0.026501 atomic mass units. Now, technically speaking, if you think about what happens on the sun and those enormous temperatures, helium is also not going to be a neutral atom. It's also going to have their its electrons removed, but that's typically a very small quantity of the total mass de deficiency, so we really don't have to worry about that. This is good enough for us. So now we can see that the delta M, which is the mass defect, is equal to that quantity right there, and then converting to energy, so the energy equivalent is equal to the mass defect times the conversion of 931.5 MeVs per atomic mass unit. So in our case, that's equal to 0 0.026501 atomic mass units times 931.5 MeVs per atomic mass unit. And so if we do that in the calculator, 0 0.026501 times 931.5 equals, and it releases 24.7 MeVs each time four hydrogens are slammed together through a set of processes called the proton-proton chain into a helium nucleus. And that produces an enormous quantity of energy, and that is what fuels the energy from stars. So stars produce their enormous quantity of energy by co converting hydrogen into helium at the cores of them and the same in our sun. And that is the energy production used in hydrogen bombs. Of course, to make a hydrogen bomb, you need to generate the temperatures required, more than 10 million degrees, to get this fusion process to occur. And for peaceful purposes, we are trying to make uh, power plants that can actually do this. Of course, imagine building a power plant that can contain a reaction where temperatures reach 10 million degrees and above without melting the power plant. Of course, that's technically very, very difficult, and they're trying to get that to work, but that may be a long time off yet before we're able to do so. But anyway, a nuclear fusion reaction is simply where you slam smaller atoms together, you make bigger ones, the mass of the bigger ones is less than the mass of the smaller ones, you take the difference in the mass, call the mass defect, multiply times the conversion, and you can calculate the energy released in such a reaction. And that's how you do it.